What you are about to see is not real news. It is satire based on real news. The characters you're about to see are not real-life humans. They are frighteningly realistic puppets based on real-life humans. The views expressed in the show are not necessarily those of Top TV, its sponsors, its advertisers, or the nice lady that makes the coffee. Your lead story today. Former President Nelson Mandela is recovering after being hospitalized at the weekend for what was described as a long-standing abdominal complaint. Mr. Mandela, what caused your hospitalization? Hello there, Tim. Reports of government corruption made me sick to my stomach. <clears throat> Sorry to hear that, uh, sir. What have the doctors given you for that? They didn't give me much, uh, but uh, they took away my newspapers as well as the radio and television. They said the news was making me sick. You are blaming the media? No, 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 Tim. Not at all. Uh, the media is just doing its job. It's all the corruption in government that's the problem. I expect that's the reason they want uh, a secrecy bill. Well, Mr. Mandela, we wish you a speedy recovery. Good luck. Uh, thank you, Tim. By the way, who won the soccer? Dada. What have I told you about speaking to the press? You must rest now. You see, Tim, I have my own secrecy bill to deal with here. Uh, goodbye. Pirates, they won 1-0. Wonderful goal by Benny. Molo Sani Bonani Taxe how's it? I'm Tim Modise. This is Za News. Let's get it on. Right wing group, the Helofte Folk, has laid a complaint of hate speech against President Jacob Zuma at the Human Rights Commission. Our guest in the studio is Helofte Folk leader Andre Fisaki. And his, uh, well, uh, I'm not really sure what it is. This are my bodyguard. So I would advise that you carry yourself in a civilized fashion. You mean, uh, like a white man? Exactly. Are you sure that's your bodyguard? He looks more like some kind of paramilitary gimp. What are a gimp? He are yet to maintain discipline. Hmm, kinky. Uh, maybe a bit uh, of bondage, too. Does it speak? <laughs> Mr. Fisaki, I'm warning you. There won't be any touching on my studio. We'll be back a bit later, maybe. Oh, f What have I done now? Do you know who I am? Sorry, can't help you. Check the name on your driver's license. I am the famous Julius Malema. In that case, I am suspending your license. You can't do that. I am appealing. Sir, you are not at all appealing. In fact, you are quite unattractive. Cape Town Mayor Patricia DeLille has gone on a charm offensive outlining 10 ways in which her team is trying to build a more inclusive Cape Town. Honorable Mayor, is this an attempt to win back some goodwill after you used riot police and purple dye to arrest a group of grannies protesting on Rondebosch Common? Tim, hello. How are you? You are looking very handsome today. So the charm offensive is in full swing. No, this is how I normally am, Tim. In Cape Town, we greet everyone with a smile on our face and a song in our heart. Welcome to Cape Town. Let's see who's smiling. Right. Except if they are a granny on Ronda Bosch Common. Then you greet them with a water cannon and a night in prison. Tim, listen to me. I'd like to talk about how we are making Cape Town more inclusive. Go ahead. Well, firstly, we've got buses. So do North Korea and Syria. Okay. And we've also got Table Mountain and the Carnival. And Just admit it, you've got a bad PR problem. Tim, everything is fine. And it is obvious that Cape Town is absolutely inclusive. Why would anyone disagree? Well, uh, some may think... Uh, Those who have negative views of our city are agents of destruction, agitators who deserve to be sprayed with purple dye so we know where they are and we can throw their hat in jail. Okay, we don't have time for these political sissies. We are building a wonderful city, uh, a city where everybody can come together and sing together. Welcome to Cape Town. Enjoy the party. Come on and have some phantom. Lighten up, okay? You are so serious. 
Let's get back to our guest, Mr. Andre Fisahi of the Helofte Folk, and his pet Kim, who prefers to remain anonymous. Mr. Fisahi, why have you reported President Zuma to the Human Rights Commission? Your president was singing the forbidden song at that ANC party in Bloemfontein on January 11. Tubule Bunu? Shut! Stay! Good boy! Mr. Fisahi, don't you think it's a bit ironic for you to be filing complaints of hate speech when your people, the Boers, committed actual hate crimes against black people for so many years? Listen, boy, don't get cheeky with me. That apartheid business are in the past. You must put the past behind you. That is why it are called the past. It is gone. Finish and la. This is now. And the Boer nation are being killed left, right, and far right. Right. Tell me, why did you leave the AWB and form this new organization? The RVB was getting too f***ing liberal. The leadership was allowing blacks to just show my walk around as if they own a country. How many members are there of the Gelofte f***? I beg your pardon, uh, Gelofte f***. We've got 14 million members. Uh, all of them is ready to fight for the Boer cause. Mr. Fisaghi, isn't it true that you are just a small-minded racist who is too stupid to learn from the mistakes of history? How do you dare? What? Are you going to touch me on my studio? I will f***ing kill you on your studio. I told you, no touching on my studio. I want to take this book out for one month. Do you have a card? Of course I do. I'm a card-carrying member of every library in the world. That is why I am so clever. I'm sorry, Mr. Malema. Your membership is suspended. Fuck. What did I do now? Well, you took out woodwork for beginners five years ago and never returned it. Hey, give me my bloody book. I must learn how to win friends and influence people. I don't have much time. Hurry up! Security! Police brutality! Help! So, how are you feeling, Tada? Well, I'm quite well, Arch. Thank you. It's quite a story, you know, every time you go to the hospital. It is the family, you know. Every time I have an ache or a pain, they take me to get it checked. I'll tell them I'm okay, but they don't listen. Yes, I, I know what you mean, you know. If, if, if I even sneeze at supper, you know, I get these funny looks from everyone. Yes, yeah, so sometimes you just have something in your throat and they get very hysterical. It's just because they love you. I know, I know. Do you wish you could be younger, Dada? That would be like wishing for the world to go backwards. And we wouldn't want that. Things are pretty backwards as it is. Yes, but you know, look at all the incredible things we've witnessed over the years. Imagine what else will happen in the near future. It will be very exciting, I must say. What would you most like to see happen, Arch? Well, I would like to see South Africa prosper and grow into a wonderful country for its citizens. Yes, Arch. Me too. And I would so very much like to see a cure for HIV and AIDS in our time. Yes, that would be so miraculous. But also flying cars. Oh, yes. I would love to be around for that. And maybe a little bean, you know, a little bean that you put in a microwave and bing, a whole meal comes out. And what about that thing we used to see in science fiction movies? Fingerprint ID. But, uh, Tara, we already have that. Oh, good. Carry on. Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe says there is no need for electoral reforms and insists that voters will go to the polls this year. In a speech you made on Saturday, you said you did not want to see any violence in the next election campaign. Read my lips, Tim. I said I did not want to see any violins. Violins are gay. The most gay of all musical instruments, and I will not tolerate them in my country. 
So when I say there must be no violins during the election campaign, what I mean is there must be no gay Europeans. If violins are banned in Zimbabwe, does this mean you won't fiddle with the election results? Gods, have this man shot at once. <laughs> Moving right away to the United States, where recent polls indicated that in a potential election 2012 matchup, President Barack Obama leads Mitt Romney 46%. To 43%. If Rick Santorum is the Republican nominee, Obama leads 47% to 42%. Mr. President, you appear to be out of the Oval Office today. Uh, that's right, Tim. I'm having an informal caucus with my old friend, former President Bill Clinton here. Uh, hello, Brett. Nice to see you. I mean, <clears throat> hey, what up, dog? I just been hanging with my homeboy from the hood. Know what I'm saying? Getting in some chill time before Lil Hill gets back to the crib. Slamming the skeezers, putting on the tweezers, racking up the fat caps. Know what I'm saying? All right? Word. <laughs> Bill, I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. And uh, Tim's from Africa. Oh, right. Hello, Tim. How's Africa? Uh, fine, thank you. We'll be back with more a bit later. <laughs> In the category of Worst Actor in a Foreign Language Drama, the nominations are Peter Melder in The Bullshit Artist, Julius Malema in Extremely Loud and Incredibly Annoying, and Robert Mugabe in War Horse. And the Oscar goes to Julius Malema. I would like to thank... Uh, hey, hey, when I stop the music. The government is developing a strategy that will see more money injected into the study of South Africa's paleontological and archaeological past. Cabinet spokesman Jimmy Manyi said the government hoped that concrete scientific data would resolve various conflicting theories. Yeah, you see, with the help of government uh, funding, one of the things we'll be disproving is uh, Peter Milter's claim that Bantu-speaking people did not live in 40% of the country. We are also hoping to discover strong evidence indicating that white people only arrived in Africa last Friday. Furthermore, we will continue with our quest to prove that South Africa is the cradle of humankind. Mrs. Pless here was discovered in Sterkfontein in 1947. She is just over 2 million years old. Taung Child was discovered in the Northwest province in 1924. He was the first hominid to be discovered in Africa and he lived two and a half million years ago. Now, Juju Baby here is our most recent discovery. Hey, I'm still alive. Juju Baby was found at a building site in Santon. Although this sub-adult had a deceptively large skull, it housed a very small brain. He would have communicated through gestures and whining noises, which may have attracted the attention of larger, more dangerous creatures, leading to his demise. I am not dead. Good heaven! Like pilt down men, Juju Baby appears to be an elaborate hoax. Uh, we do apologize. <laughs> Surfers and fishermen are complaining about an increase in the illegal ritual sacrifice of animals on Deben's beaches. There have even been reports of religious figures beating demons out of people at the water's edge. In the name of all that is holy, be gone, Satan. Ooh, huh? yes, yes, harder, harder. Get that nasty old demon out. Out of my beautiful body. Hey, Bree, that's totally not cool. I'm just like trying to go for a wave here. I am the Dark Lord. I feel no pain. Oh, f not Durban seawater. You know I can't handle E. coli. F it. You win. I'm out of here. 
Oh, that feels so much better. Oh, maybe you could spank me a few more times just to make sure he's gone. Hey, Bree. That's totally not cool. First, we make sacrifices to give thanks. Chicken? Oh, my God. Sheep? OMG. Hey, Bree. I told you, that is totally not cool. Pig? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is some heavy shit, man. <laughs> In the category of Best Actor in a Comedy, the nominations are Jacob Zuma in Man on Muppet, Benny McCarthy in Your Master Puss in Boots, and Helen Zill in The Help, now with subtitles in Kitchen Zulu and Fanagalo. And the Oscar goes to... Helen Zill! Yebo, yebo! See you, bonga, everyone. Me na jabolani too much. I couldn't have done it without the help. Lindiwe, upi wena. This is for you. Well, not literally, of course. We are back now with President Barack Obama and Bill Clinton. Mr. President, given the choice of running against Mitt Romney or Rick Santorum, who would you choose? I don't know. They are both a couple of redneck dipshits. Thanks, Bill, but both men have their strengths and weaknesses, but overall, uh, I'd have to say Santorum. Hey, Tim, did you Google the word Santorum? It means the frothy mix of lubricant and fecal matter that is sometimes the byproduct of anal sex. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? You'll have to excuse the former president. He's had a couple of drinks. Mr. Clinton, have you given the president any advice on what to avoid on his campaign for re-election? Hell yeah. Two words. Monica Lewinsky. Cigar? No, thank you. <laughs> you should. <laughs> as long as you don't inhale. Mr. President, money talks when it comes to elections in America. Do you have what it takes to outspend the conservatives? I've got something they haven't got. Tell him, Bill. He's got soul, brother. He's got ghetto blood. He's also got a damn nerve going out on a school night. Who's gonna help the kids with their homework? Who's gonna solve the Middle East crisis? Come on, Barack. Say goodbye to your pal. Jeez, all right, I'm coming. See ya, Bill. Later, Tim. First pussy whip president I ever saw. Hey, sweetheart. Yeah, yes. No, no. Yes, uh, no, no, I'm not. I didn't. Uh, of course not. In the category of Best Documentary, the nominees are Wildcat Strikes Again, Zuelin Zimavavi, Communism is Not Dead, It's Just Sleeping, Blade in the Monday, and Shoot to Kill, Begitale. And the Oscar goes to Shoot to Kill, Begitale. Thank you for voting for me. To all of you who did not vote for me, well, I will let Big Mama here do the talking. It's like every time we take a step forward, Robert Mugabe takes Africa two steps backwards. What did he do now? Well, he is being very verbal about his disapproval of gay rights. He said that only a man and a woman should marry, and that uh, that is what created him. Well, uh, that is not saying much. No, oh, that is true, but, you know, it is very difficult to change people's minds about certain things. Yes, I was certainly not raised in a world that uh, acknowledged homosexuality. But at some point, you have to step beyond your environment and use your intellect to understand that human rights belong to all humans. Adapt or die. That is what they say. Sometimes I, I find it so difficult to understand why anybody would deny freedom to anybody else, you know? Even though I have witnessed so much of this behavior all my life, I still find it hard to believe. Isn't that strange? That is because you are an optimist by nature, my friend. That is true. I, 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 I do like to think the best of mankind. 
but in a way, I can understand a person's inability to change. Like you, for example. Me? Of all people? What do you mean? I can change. I can adopt. I've done it throughout my life. I've shifted and moved. I have done full 360 degree turns. So, how come you always wear those shirts? What do you mean? I like my shirts. They are festive. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, 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 I only meant that... Uh, Whatever. I... Uh, you should talk. Always wearing that dress. There's no need to... to, 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 to uh, get nasty. South Africa will spend 300 billion rand building new nuclear reactors. Mr. President, this is a huge investment in nuclear fission. Is it going to be money well spent? Tim, let me correct you. We are investing in nuclear power, not nuclear fishing. I don't know what nuclear fishing is, but it sounds very, very violent. And I would imagine that it leaves your snook far too radioactive to eat. Fission, Mr. President, nuclear fission. Oh, yes. <laughs> we have a, a nuclear vision. Nuclear is our vision for the future. Mr. President, before we build more nuclear power stations, shouldn't we first have an evacuation plan in Cape Town for the one reactor we do have? Tim, there is definitely a plan in place. Those people upwind from Quebec must run screaming in the opposite direction. And those people downwind must make sure they have paid their tax in full before the radiation sickness really kicks off. Okay, you're the top guy. I respect your knowledge, so here's my problem. On the one hand, there's grease. On the other, there's oil. Both incredibly volatile. If grease goes down, oil's gonna go through the roof. But if I target oil, then grease could slip away unnoticed and I'd miss a chance to clean up. What do I do? Mr. Trump, we tackle them both. We can do that? Yep, grease on one hand, oil on the other. <laughs> could I suggest a mild shampoo and conditioner that will leave you with body but without frizz? Do it. Tokyo Sehuale flew to Antarctica this week to study the effects of climate change on the icy continent. Mr. Sehuale, a return flight from Cape Town to Antarctica gives you a personal carbon footprint of 8 metric tons of carbon. Don't you think it's a bit indulgent pumping out that much pollution just to confirm what science has been telling us for years? Tim, do you know how cold it is here? The faster we get global warming, the better. So, uh, you don't believe in climate change? Of course I do. Right now, I can tell you that climate is changing from horrible to terrible. But uh, don't you think this trip seems to suggest that uh, while the little people should sacrifice to save the planet, the rich and the powerful can fly wherever they want and to hell with the consequences? Yes, what's your point? Damn it, Tim. Can't you see that there is a rich man freezing his fur-lined testicles off? Why are you poor people so f***ing selfish? Mr. Santorum, please place your hand on the Bible and recite the oath of office. Uh, Richard John, molasses strap on dildo, doggy style Santorum. Do hereby swear to perform my duties as the President of the United States to the best of my abilities, to obey the Constitution at all times, except when it wants to give rights to fags and Muslims, oh, and colored people too. We need to do something about them, but I'm sure we'll find some in the Old Testament we can use. Oh, and I'm gonna need the, the new codes. Those Iranian Arab communists in Saudi Arabia and Colombia need to get a taste of the righteous cleansing fire of American democracy. Oh, and... What is it, honey? I need to start my campaign. Right now. And now to our studio guest, DA Parliamentary Leader, Lindy Wemazibu. Hi, Tim. It's really good to be here. Can, can I quickly do a quick shout-out to my friends in biology class? Sure. Hey, bitches. What's up? Told you I was going to be on TV. Suck on that, Bethany. I love them so much. We're BFFs. 
Lindy, where there are reports doing the rounds that. Okay, like about my report. You have to understand, I totally got an A plus for maths, but Miss Katzenberg is such a bitch. Okay, she totally took away like a million percent, even though I got the whole of section nine right. I mean, I know I did because Chantal got all of them right, and we compared after the exam, and I totally got them right. But Miss Katzenberg, she hates me. Okay, she's so fat, and then I'm hot, and she just can't deal with it. So on my report, it says B plus, but really, it actually should be saying. A plus. Are you finished? Fully. Okay. There are media reports doing the rounds that uh, Mampela Rampele might be tipped to take over leadership of the DA from Helen Zilla one day. What? Mampela Rampela, the prominent struggle activist, academic, and businesswoman. Uh, does she have colours in water polo? I don't think so. Well, then who the hell does she think she is threatening Helen like that? She is not threatening anyone. She has just been linked with the DA in a way that suggests... Oh, wait, did Bianca tell you this? Because she's been so totally trying to destroy me ever since I groaned Sipo behind the bicycle shed. And even though he kissed me back with tongue, she still thinks that it isn't real. You know, I can't believe she would lie like that about Helen. So uh, Helen Zilla has no plans to hand over power anytime soon? As if. Helen is going to be in charge forever, like a million years, like five. And by then, like, the sun will have gone cold and people will be extinct and cockroaches will be, like, ruling the planet. But wouldn't Miss Rampele be a good candidate? I mean, uh, she's got all the credentials and... Uh... Except colours for water polo. Okay, but apart from that, well, she... did she go on senior outreach camp? I, I don't think so. Because she can't be head girl unless you went on the senior outreach camp. Uh, we're not talking about head girl. We are talking about being leader of the DA. So am I, Tim. What do you think Helen is if she's not head girl? I thought you were head girl. No, no. I'm senior deputy head girl with colours and deputy ship. So no ambition? to be a head girl one day. Uh, Tim, shut up. Stop it, he's so gross. Oh my God, I can't believe you'd ask me that blind. Hey, is that a no? <laughs> Why are we doing this? Because here we can. From me, team, and the team, is Hamburger. Sheh. Goodbye and Futek. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>